Hey guys, Nathan here, welcome back. And it's time to talk about stocks and shares. Stocks and shares are a fundamental part of every smart investor's portfolio. The stock market has not just made millionaires, it's also made some billionaires. Building wealth in the stock market happens through a principle called compounding, which we will take a look at in this video. But this video is about going over the basics. What exactly are stocks and shares? How many of them should we be buying? And also, how do we build wealth through stocks? These are some of the questions we'll be covering in this video. By the end of this video, you will probably know more about stocks and shares the 90% of the population. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Okay, sit back, relax. Here is what you need to know about investing in stocks and shares. So what are stocks and shares? A stock represents the fractional ownership of a corporation. And the unit of stocks are called shares. Simple. So here is Money Corp. And they're going to issue a million shares onto the stock market at $1 per share. Now it's very simple, someone can come along and this guy has got $10, so he's going to buy 10 shares at $1 and now he owns a very small fraction of this corporation. And what are dividends? Well, here's Money Corp, and it's made lots of profit this year, so companies basically have two things that they can do with their profits. The first is that they can reinvest the profits back into the business, and this way the business can grow faster and better or it can take the profits and pay its shareholders so anybody holding shares can receive dividends and different companies pay at different times some pay monthly some pay quarterly and some pay annually generally the bigger the corporation then the more likely are that they'll pay dividends. So dividends are very common in things like banks or large companies like Apple, but you'll normally find that smaller businesses like startups will be reinvesting everything they can back into the business. So let's cover some of the jargon, some of the buzzwords. I think we've entered a bull market. We are definitely heading into recession. I think the market's due for a correction. I think correction. there's gonna be a stock market We're going crash. to be going into this a is depression. bear market territory. So let's crack these one by one. A bull market, what does it mean? It's when the market goes up by at least 20%. A bear market. A bear market is when the market drops by over 20%. A market correction is when the market drops over 10% but not as far as 20%. A stock market crash normally is when you'll see a double digit drop in a matter of days or weeks. A recession is two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth, measured by GDP, gross domestic product. A depression. A depression is simply an extreme recession that lasts three or more years. Okay. Take a deep breath and relax. That was a lot of information to take in. Ready to continue? Okay. How many stocks should you buy? Well, this comes down to asset allocation, which is a fundamental for all investors and something to continually work on. Generally, if you're quite young, 
say 20, then you may have all of your money, your full portfolio into stocks. And that is actually quite a good thing to do. If you're starting to get a bit older, say 40 plus, then you might start to diversify and have half your money in stocks and diversify into some bonds. And if you're getting a bit older, a bit wiser, and you don't really want to take the crashes, then you may pull back and only have around 30% of your money into stocks, and more of the money into safe haven assets like bonds. So how much money should you put into stocks? It depends. What is your risk tolerance? Are you able to handle the booms and busts of the stock market? How old are you? So someone who is 20 will be putting a different amount of money into stocks than someone who is say 60. And what's your financial knowledge? If you've got lots of knowledge on stocks in the stock market, then you may invest differently to someone who knows nothing. So how do you build wealth? Is through a principle called compounding. And the more that you know about compounding, the better you're gonna be. Compounding is when you invest your money and month by month it grows and grows and compounds on itself and begins to grow exponentially. Let's take an example. So you can invest in an index tracker which tracks the stock market. This is the S&P 500. And since inception, the S&P 500 has grown approximately 10% per year. So if we have an initial investment of let's say $20,000 and we'll contribute let's say $250 per month over let's put in 33 years and we know the S&P grows at about 10% per year. Then if we calculate this together, you can see it will grow to 1.1 million. And this is the power of compounding. So after 10 years, it would turn into 100 grand. After 20 years, it would turn into 300 grand. Then compounding kicks in. 25 years, half a million. And after 33 years, 1.1 million pounds. And we're gonna finish with a bonus chapter with some wisdom from the masters. Starting with Warren Buffett, obviously one of the world's best investors, now has over 70 billion of assets. The stock market is a device for transferring money from the patient to the impatient. Next up, Jack Bogle, a guy you wanna get very familiar with, he was the founder of the Vanguard Group and he created the first index fund, a proper legend. The stock market is a casino in the short term and a machine for compounding wealth in the long term. Next up, Peter Lynch, one of the best investors that has ever been. He was the manager at Fidelity and he averaged in his time a 30% return, so triple the market average. He said, the key to winning in stocks is not to get scared out of them. And Alan Greenspan, he is the former chair of the Federal Reserve and he was the chair for almost 20 years. So he knows a lot about stocks and he said, buy stocks and then forget you have them. And finally, again with Jack Bogle, and he was discussing, talking with someone who was talking about getting out of the markets at the top and back in at the bottom. Because this is the ideal scenario, right? If you could sell your stocks right at the peaks, then buy back in right at the bottom. And Jack said, in 65 years, he's never met anybody who can consistently do it. So to summarize, I think the running theme of some of the world's top investors is this. 
Notice that all of them are investors, not traders. They don't try to time the market and make regular buy and sells. The stock market has always been volatile, so it's about being patient and not getting scared out of your positions. And finally, take a look at this. Notice that the stock market is again almost setting all-time highs. So here is an important point. The only way people lose money in stocks is if they sell when the market is crashing. Now here's the important point. Stocks have always recovered and gone on to set new highs. So all you have to do is hold on to your positions. The stock market has never taken any money off anyone. It's people selling at the wrong times is when they lose money. Keep that little bit of information safe because it's very important. Okay, so you now know what a stock is, you know what dividends are, you know how many stocks you should be buying, you know how you build wealth through stocks through compounding. Like I said, you probably now know more than 90% of the population on stocks and shares, so congratulations. If you liked anything in this video, be sure to click that like button, it really helps the channel, so it'd be much appreciated. If you haven't already subscribed, then click the subscribe button below this video. And what do you think about stocks? Do you think it's going to be a great investment for the next 100 years? Let me know below in the comments. Okay, cheers guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.